On Friday afternoon when I got my diagnosis, I was sitting at my desk and um, the phone call comes at three o'clock and, you know, they said, well, we have the results of your biopsy and you have breast cancer. And I don't think I heard another word that person said on the other end of the phone. I was just staring at a picture frame of my husband and my two sons and thinking, wow, I am not ready to leave. When I arrived, because I do work at the medical center, um, there was a social worker waiting for me and ready to ask me what I had been doing over the weekend, how was I coping, what type of support I had, who I had told. Um, she spent over well over an hour with me, just really walking me through what was about to happen, um, the decisions I would need to make, who I was going to be seeing, um, and I was really grateful for that. I came in really thinking about systems and processes. So the Donabiadian model of structure process outcome was how I really thought about it. I've got these pieces, and how do I rearrange the pieces to get a better outcome for patients? And over time, I realized that the friction points were all about people. So sort of about the midpoint of my time, I, I really spent more time thinking about ways to reduce the friction points. I had the secretaries from all the different specialties. I invited them once a month for a, a lunch so that they would see each other, so that they would know the person who was calling them on the phone and bringing them pain, more or less. So, you know, if I call you and tell you I need you to schedule these five different appointments and it's going to take you two hours, and I do that every single time I talk to you, that's all I do. I just bring you another big piece of work and you know, it, it's just a completely different feeling when you know that person and when you know what they look like and you know, who, you know, you know that they have children, you know what's important to them. It's harder to resent them when they call you and so I would, you know, find opportunities to reduce friction points whenever I could. Rather than having, say, um, a secretary in surgery be scheduling the patient with me and then potentially with other care providers, um, the, uh, there was a couple of secretaries in the breast program who would get initial calls for breast, breast cancer patients or patients with other breast problems. And then they would try to um, coordinate uh, the care of those patients so that they would organize um, the information that we would need together if the patients needed to see, um, say, other specialists like a plastic surgeon or a medical oncologist or whatever beforehand. They'd try to set that up. So they try to streamline um, and uh, streamline the care of those patients is, was sort of the, I think that's one of the first important uh, changes that was made. It's not just about, you know, my piece of it. You know, for me, all I do is breast reconstruction. I don't even have to really think about their cancer if I don't, if I'm not thinking holistically. But if I am, I want to understand what their surgical oncologist is recommending and what what I'm going to recommend might do in terms of their next steps in the, their care process, right? So, I mean, it's easy to sort of box yourself into just the, your piece of the care process, which is plenty complex enough. I mean, you know, it's really hard for all of us to keep up with our own specialty areas, let alone try and uh, keep a perspective, a broader perspective on breast cancer. And then if you then say, I'm going to try and sort of keep a little bit up to date with, you know, the the global health of the, our patients, it, it really, it gets to be a pretty unmanageable piece of work. And so by creating systems that, to support the care that didn't apply any burden to the patient, I think we were able to give much more comprehensive and tailored care um, without burdening the system.